Good morning, everybody. We are here now with Peter Robbins, who is an esteemed uh, UF ufologist, a researcher. He's been doing this for many decades. Um, I thought he was going to be speaking today about Randolph Shroom, but actually he has something else to discuss today. And just so that for those that are watching, this is the books that Peter had uh, written. This one is co-authored with Larry Warren, who was the whistleblower at the Rendlesham incident in uh, the UK in 1980. And also, this is his latest book, Halton Woodbridge at Air Force Colonel's 30-Year Fight to Silence an Authentic UFO Whistleblower. So Peter has been speaking about this recently, but today he's going to change up the pace and he's going to be discussing mm -hmm. something else. So Peter, good morning to you. Good morning, Bill. Good to see you. It's great to see you as always. And um, what will you be discussing tonight? I mean, today, actually, uh, your presentation. What will be to the topic that you'll be... A very important footnote to the early history of the UFO subject and the cover-up. Uh, it's a subject I got involved in a long time ago, did my initial research, did a series of presentations on, and then shelved. Uh, I pulled it out more recently, done more work, uh, filled out uh, the visual aspect more. And it is a story about the extraordinary life and the strange death of our first Secretary of Defense, a very decent man named James Vincent Forrestal. Uh, if we were to believe the official account, uh, Forrestal had a profound nervous breakdown in March of 1949 uh, upon his uh, uh, retirement. Hold it. Just, I'm going to open the door for somebody. So I'm just going to hold this. Peter's going to hold the phone one time. Sorry about that. Just had to open the door for the people that are coming in. Okay, so, I'm sorry, Peter, it was uh, Forrestal. And if we're to believe the historic account, um, after he had his breakdown, uh, he, which he certainly did, uh, he was institutionalized at Bethesda Naval Hospital in Maryland, where allegedly he went into a profound depression six weeks later and jumped out of the window. Uh, committing suicide and, of course, dying. And um, my case is that that is not true. He did not commit suicide. He was murdered. He was forced out that window. Um, Forrestal knew everything, everything about the UFO subject, probably as much as Harry Truman. Wow. Uh, he was our first Secretary of Defense. He created our modern defense department. He was somebody that could be counted on and had been counted on for 10 years to help us win the war, get us out of the Depression. And um, he was buried with full military honors at Arlington National Cemetery and then promptly forgotten with a few noteworthy exceptions. If uh, you have somebody who's in the Navy, you probably are aware of the uh, USS Forrestal, the carrier that uh, was launched in the 50s, right. now decommissioned. Uh, there is a James Forrestal campus at Princeton University where he had gone to school and one or two other things that bear his name including when you walk into the lobby of the Pentagon a bust of Forrestal that greets you. Uh, but it is a historical bit of amnesia that needs to be rectified. It's something Americans need to know about and it is, as I said, a very important footnote to the history of the early cover-up. Now was there any indication that he was going to possibly come forward and present to the public any of the information no. that he was privy? None. So on the, with all the research that you've done, why do you think he may have been murdered? That's a great question, Bill. In 1949, unlike right now, I'm going to make a, a, a conservative guess mm -hmm. that maybe one American in a hundred, at least, you know, and, uh, that would be the, the most. Um, probably knew another American who was what we would now call in therapy. Mm. It was just not very common at all. The idea of uh, a very tough guy, uh, somebody who held the most extraordinary state secrets, having a nervous breakdown. What did that mean to the people at the highest levels of power? Right. Uh, also, what did it mean if he quote unquote recovered under treatment from the nervous breakdown? and then return to uh, private life because he would have been retired. What happened if he had a relapse? Right, he blurted right, everything out. exactly. They couldn't take the chance. So you thought it was about possibly suppression due to his mental state? Well, um, 
you know, there's a great aphorism uh, attributed to Mafia hitmen before they give you two in the back of the head with the Zion's <laughs> 22. Yes. <laughs> it's nothing personal. It's just business. Right, right. In fact, the men who were physically involved in forcing him out that window might have known him. If they did, they probably respected him and most likely liked him. But it was nothing personal. It was just business. Uh, did you actually go to the hospital and uh, go over the records? I didn't go to the hospital, but I, I did get access to the records of his... Uh, in, so you saw the forensic records. report and... Oh yeah, and you'll hear day by day um, exactly how he was recovering, how everybody agreed he was recovering, that he was ready to be released on uh, Sunday the 22nd or 23rd of um, uh, May, and how at a quarter of two in the morning, some hours before his brother was supposed to pick him up, he went out the window. And wow. they all agreed from his doctors to everyone who had visited him that he really had come back uh, and had gotten back his will to live. Wow. Forrestal, um, again, he was a remarkable man. He had a character aspect that really uh, hurt him, which was he personalized his successes and failures to such a degree. He took responsibility for everything. He was Secretary of Navy during the war. Uh, anyway. Um, okay, I'm just pause with that thought because I'm going to open the door for these individuals here. Okay. He's got, Peter's going to hold my phone.